Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church. Let's hear the, uh, the word of the Lord. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods, with singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. If you would, let's stand together and uh, sing, Come, now is the time to worship.
let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your great love for us, a love that does not treat us as our sins deserve, but you show your grace and mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died in our place to pay for our sins. And even better, you renew those mercies to us every day as you offer that forgiveness. Every time we sin, it is so frequent. So Father, we pray your forgiveness for those sins and ask your blessing. And we pray that you be pleased to meet with us here this morning, to let us know your presence, to confirm to us your love and forgiveness. And so we come and we offer up our prayers on behalf of uh, those around us in need. We pray for those who have lost loved ones in recent days. We ask that you be with each of them in the midst of their loss to bring uh, comfort and peace. And we pray for those who have suffered illness and injury. We ask that you be with them to let them know your presence, your strength, your healing power and your power to restore. Father, we pray for our nation. We ask that you would uh, direct the work of our elected and appointed officials to accomplish your purposes. For we know you have a plan and we know that that plan is ultimately for the return of your son. So whatever turns and twists may be along the way, we pray you help us to, to simply trust in you that you are in control. The so Lord, we do ask that you would bring peace and justice to our land and to our hearts. We pray that your justice be tempered by mercy. So Lord, have your will and your way. Father, we pray for our military personnel, wherever they may be. We ask that you be their strength and their courage and their rear guard. We ask uh, for their families from whom they may be separated by long distances, that you would be with them to encourage their spirits and give them hope and a promise. Father, we pray for our first responders. And we ask that you be with each of them. Help them to carry out their duties in safety and with integrity and with respect and grace and mercy. Father, we pray for our frontline personnel who uh, uh, deal with illness and disease all the time. We pray for their protection. We ask you to keep them safe and to encourage them during these continued difficult times. Father, we pray for our educational system as they are uh, ramping up to a more normal uh, sort of uh, business as used to be usual. We pray for the protection of our teachers and our students, and we pray that you would uh, bring all things together to, uh, to help us with the mission of educating this generation. Father, we pray for our missionaries, wherever they may be. We ask that you would multiply the fruit of their efforts, that your word would go out uh, with the power of your spirit, that many might come to trust you for salvation and deliverance. And Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters all around the world. Many of them live and worship in places where they do so under threat of persecution, arrest, and even death because of the resistance to your gospel. So Lord, we pray for them that uh, you would encourage them wherever they may be, that you would, again, let the, their testimony go out and that those who who may at this time uh, be enemies of the gospel be converted and that they receive Christ as their Savior. So Lord, in all these things, we pray that your name be glorified. We pray for your grace. We pray for your mercy. We pray that you would be with us 
even to the return of your Son. We ask now in his name that taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And if you would uh, uh, look to uh, our psalm track once again, Change My Heart, O God. It's number 654 in the hymnals. Although the verses may not exactly coincide with the music. Scripture today is taken from Matthew chapter 17 and verses 14 through 20. Now when they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy. And he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, 
Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. The Lord bless the reading of his word. And let's give our attention to the screen again for Agnes Day.
Well, little faith. You have faith as small as a mustard seed. Jesus said, you could tell this mountain, go from here to there, and it would go. So just exactly what is it that makes all things possible for us with God? Now here we uh, see a man who approached God to heal his uh, son's seizures because the disciples were unable to do so. And Jesus kind of forthwith rebuked the demon and the child was healed. And later Jesus tells them, you couldn't cast it out because of, they couldn't cast it out because of their unbelief. Or in other words, their lack of faith. He said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it'll move. Notice how Jesus said, if you have faith, that all things are possible. So, just exactly what is it we're, we're to have faith in? In what do we believe? Well, I think it's very simple. We put our faith in Christ. We have to have our faith in God who is able to do all things. It has nothing to do with faith in ourselves. It has nothing to do with the power of positive thinking. But it has everything to do with God for whom all things are possible. Right? Yeah, I am just very perplexed at how many think power, the power of positive thinking is going to get them what they want. It's just not necessarily so. There is only one who can do all things, and that is the one who created all things. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 19 tells us that God was in Christ reconciling the word world to himself. Because Jesus is Lord, because he is all-knowing and all-powerful, and we're told in the first chapter of the Gospel of John that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was, was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was at the creation. So what is there that he cannot do? And that's why we can take to heart Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So if we place our faith in God and in Jesus Christ, we're able to declare that nothing is impossible. Of course, we have this great caveat. It has to be God's will. God is not a, a genie whose lamp we can rub. He'll pop out and give us the desires of our hearts unless the desires of our hearts are in line with his plan and will. Nothing is impossible because we know the one with whom all things are possible. And it's not up to us to overcome what seems impossible. It's up to God. He's a whole lot bigger than we are. 1 John 5, 4 tells us, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Our faith in God will make it possible to overcome anything and everything that life throws our way. We will overcome through our faith in Jesus Christ. So let me ask, what mountains are you facing right now? Maybe you lost your job recently, or the job you have doesn't pay enough to cover your bills. Maybe you're struggling financially. Or maybe you or someone near to you is struggling with an illness. Maybe COVID-19 or cancer or depression or heart disease or uh, whatever else may come up against us. These things that we face in this world, whether oppression, 
injustice, health issues, or any other thing that besets us. They all take a back seat compared to the eternal condition of our souls. Luke chapter 9 asks, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? You know, our faith makes it possible to overcome really the greatest obstacle in life. And what is that obstacle, you may ask? Glad you asked. Death. Death comes to us all, but there are different layers of death, if you will. You know, we all die physically. That all just, it just kind of comes. There's only been two recorded in the Bible that were taken up without having uh, died first. But the really important one, the one that is important to our eternal souls is our spiritual death. We all suffer this physical death. Hebrews 9.27 says it's appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Spiritual death, though, is that death that is caused by sin. Revelation uh, chapter 20 reads, The lake of fire is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That is not a lake I want to swim in. That is one thing that I pray desperately to overcome. That second death. That second death is described as spending eternity in the lake of fire, the flames of hell. This is spiritual death. But God is loving and gracious and makes it possible for us to avoid that. Faith makes it possible to escape the flames of hell. In Mark chapter 10, 17, the rich man asked Jesus, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus told him to sell all that he had to take up his cross and follow him. But this fellow went away sorrowfully because he had great possessions. And Jesus then looked at his disciples and said, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So they asked, well, who can be saved? Jesus responded with men, it's impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Remember, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So it is through Christ, God's one and only son, that salvation is possible. It is our faith in him, the forgiveness of our sin, and life to these mortal bodies and for our eternal life. Everything is possible because of him. In the New Living Translation, uh, 2 Thessalonians reads, uh, this is all because, possible because of the undeserved favor of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. And in 1 Corinthians 1.30, it says, God alone made it possible for you to be in Christ Jesus. He is the one who made us acceptable to God. He made us pure and holy. And he gave himself to purchase our freedom. In Isaiah 53, we read that Jesus, about Jesus, so when God sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of what he has experienced, my righteous servant, Jesus, will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear their sins. 
In each of these verses, the scriptures describe how God has made it possible for us to be saved through Christ. See, if we put our faith in Jesus, we'll be able to look death right in the eye and say, nothing is impossible. We will be able to declare, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? So now we can believe and boldly declare that nothing is impossible because the Bible tells us with God all things are possible. If you have faith, nothing will be impossible for you. And Jesus will make it possible, as Isaiah said, for many to be counted righteous, to be saved from their sins, to be saved from this spiritual death. And let me say it again, with God all things are possible. With God by faith, through Jesus Christ, we are saved. The greatest miracle ever performed the forgiveness, the covering of our sins, and eternal life. Jesus can do it. He created the world. He became one of us and bore our sins, carried them, took on our sins, and took them to the cross. And then he rose from the grave. Romans chapter 6 says, Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. Jesus died for our sins on the cross. And just as he had victory over sin and death, each of us can as well. We continue in chapter 6 of Romans, uh, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. We gain this victory over the impossible by confessing Christ as our Savior and Lord. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So with God, by faith through Jesus Christ, we can be forgiven our sins and receive eternal life. This is the greatest miracle of all. All things are possible through him who gives us eternal life through his son. We appropriate it simply by asking, God, forgive me because of what Jesus has done. Give me this eternal life that you're talking about. Give me a new life in Christ. In Christ, old things have passed away. All things have become new. We are new creations through Jesus Christ. To him be all blessing and honor and glory forever and ever. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for the encouragement of your spirit. But Lord, let us not just hear these promises and say, oh, that's nice. But let us act and ask and receive those things which you have set aside for those who love you. So we pray these things in Jesus' name and for his glory and honor. Amen. As we bring our service to a close, I have a, uh, I didn't really find anything that uh, in our hymnal or any of the, the recordings that we have, so I, I found another one. 
So this is new to us. Uh, a Stronger Faith by Fanny Crosby, one of my favorite old hymn writers. So if, uh, if you go ahead and, and play that, there is an insert in your bulletin. Uh, Thank you for joining us today, and let us close in a word of prayer. Lord, again, we thank you for this time together. We pray now that as we go, your spirit would guide our steps and give us strength for the journey. Write your love, your will, your way on our hearts, and glorify yourself in each child called by your name. For to you belong all blessing and honor and glory forever. Amen.